Hey up, love. What's for tea? Lamp chops. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. It's me, Stacey from The Book Eels on Wheels, coming to you on my own today because Jamie's out at work. But as I had a little bit of time free, I thought I would spend a few minutes making a video for all of you lovely subscribers. Now, for those of you that have been following our channel for a while, you'll know that I spent the last four summers working as a campsite warden here in North Wales. Jamie also did some hours on site, although he was working full time for the NHS and other places as well. So I thought, what a great opportunity for me to make a little video for a change. I actually am the one that knows stuff about this. <laughs> Now, it's not going to be the usual very well planned video that Jamie puts together because I'm, I'm more of a kind of winging it kind of person. But I have put together my five pros and cons for being a campsite warden. And this is the time of year we're heading into spring now where the new caravan season is starting. You may be considering applying for warden jobs. You may have already applied or it might just be something you're interested in hearing about for the future. So I haven't separated this into five pros and five cons. What I've done is picked five things that I think are important to consider and then shown you how there's an upside and a downside, as with everything in life, to all of those things. OK, so number one, the first thing I think is probably the most obvious to talk about is that you are going to be working seasonally and most likely your contract is going to be a temporary one. Now, this means that your job is quite flexible um, and it's great if like Jamie and I you're moving on from a career job or sort of a more permanent type um, career that you want to sort of change and, and do something a little bit more relaxed or or kind of easy going I guess then this is this is great because it means you can try it out for a season without feeling like you're messing employers around or anything like that because a lot of places will be quite used to people coming in for a season and then moving on again at the end. Now Obviously, as we did, there's almost always the option to stay on and help for another season if, if that's something that you're looking for. So you can find more permanent work at campsites, but often it is going to be just a seasonal vacancy you're looking for. Now, this obviously is also great seasonally because, as you probably saw if you've watched some of our travel videos, um, Vietnam, Thailand, South Africa, we did all of those places in just a single winter because our caravan park season ran from March all the way through to the end of October, meaning we had November, December, January and February each year where we weren't working. Um, obviously not great for earning money, but if you budget that well and obviously you know it's going to happen, then that means you've got a lot of time off over the winter to go away and do whatever you want to do. Now, the flip side of that, of course, is that your free time in the year is generally going to be the UK winter. Um, obviously, if you're working on a busy campsite, um, tourism happens largely in the summer in the UK. So if you're someone who likes to go away in the summer months um, and have lots of time off and stuff like that over bank holidays and even weekends, the likelihood is if you're working on a campsite, you are going to be working pretty much every weekend and lots if not all of the bank holidays and summer holidays so if you've got children that are going to be off school or grandchildren that you want to spend a lot of time with do just bear that in mind now the other flip side of course of temporary work or seasonal work is generally it tends to be quite low paid um usually you're going to be working for minimum wage and often just an hourly rate and obviously your contract really may vary some places are great and they put you on a salary others will give you guaranteed hours but then some places are also kind of very low hour, 10 hour a week contracts maybe, or even zero hours in some cases. And you're obviously expected then to be around more at the busier period. So it's not always a really kind of, um, it's not a regular hour job, let's say. Again though, that can be really nice because if there's a team of you on a site, if it's a bigger site, you can obviously work that around you and make it work for your commitments as well. So number two, my pro slash con number two, is that um, your job is gonna be very varied as a campsite warden. Now, if you're like me and you get bored easily, that is a great thing. Um, I absolutely loved the fact that every day was different when I was working on the campsite. I mean, you can be kind of sorting out a problem with somebody's like electric hookup one minute and then towing someone off um, soft ground or mud and the next, dealing with kind of queries about things, answering the phones, doing admin work, doing grounds work. There are so many different things that you can kind of do, especially if you're on a site like I was 
was where I was the only warden, so I was really a jack of all trades, <laughs> um, which I really enjoyed. Um, obviously, the downside of that is that your job is very varied, so you don't only get to do necessarily the things that you really enjoy doing. Um, if you're someone, for example, who doesn't really like cleaning, then there's usually cleaning. Or if you, um, I don't know, <laughs> don't don't like using a strimmer, you're probably going to use a strimmer. So. Um, <laughs> I'm coming up with these really rubbish examples here. But what I'm trying to say is, yes, the job is varied. You're going to do something different every day. But also bear in mind that that means that not all of the jobs you're going to do, you're probably going to be your kind of top favourite thing. <laughs> um, number three, this kind of relates a little bit to the last one and was definitely more of a, a pro than a con for me. And that is that you're going to spend a heck of a lot of your time working outside outdoors now this for me again like i say i'm a really outdoorsy person i love to be outside in in all weathers really um but you are you're going to be doing a lot of grounds work even just kind of checking people in and helping them find the facilities on site and where their pitch is you're going to be outside a lot so if you are someone who prefers to be indoors then being a campsite warden probably isn't going to be for you um the only way that could possibly work i know i've seen some adverts um for some bigger sites, um, host seasons and places like that, and you know, pontins maybe, <laughs> um, where they are just advertising for a receptionist or someone to work in the shop or someone to work in the bar. So if you're on a bigger site where there's a big team of you, again, it might be that your role is quite set. But again, generally, if you're going to be on a smaller um, family run type campsite where there aren't many staff, you're probably, you know, you're going to do a lot of the outside stuff too. And it's great exercise. It's a wonderful way of keeping fit and healthy. So it's not, it's definitely not all, all a downside, but yeah, the bad weather, people are still going to arrive in the rain. They're still going to get stuck in the rain. In fact, they're especially going to get stuck in the rain. And um, cleaning the toilet blocks is not fun when it's wet because there's a lot more muddy footprints to clean up. But you know what? It's good. Being outside is good. <laughs> okay, number four. Again, it's kind of another obvious one. You are going to deal with a lot of people. <laughs> so if you are not a people person, I'm gonna say that probably being a caravan site warden is not gonna be your cup of tea because you deal with people in every single aspect of the job. Even if you're only employed as a groundsman or groundswoman um, and you, your job is mainly gonna be looking after the grounds and cutting the grass and stuff, people are still gonna stop you every five minutes when you're on the mower and ask you things about where the l sand point is or can they stay an extra night or is there room for her friend Marie's kid to pitch a tent next to the caravan, all of that stuff. You're gonna get stopped and asked, so you're gonna to need to be a people person. Now, this I think is brilliant if you're a sociable person. There's usually so much going on on campsites. Often if there's a bar like there was, um, well, before COVID, obviously, there was a bar in, in the um, in the site that we worked on. Um, and I got really involved, not only working behind the bar, but I, always, like, I also got involved with actually organizing and doing <laughs> some of the entertainment and um, stuff like that. Um, so it's a really sociable place to be on a campsite and especially like where we were when the season pitch holders who are there all the time, you get to know the regulars and um, it's, it's kind of like a big extended family really. So it's a really, really lovely atmosphere. Um, and also obviously you're working really closely with a small team of people who you know you see all the time and it might just be you and the site owner or it could be you and a couple of other people. So again, it's a nice kind of family feel. The flip side of that, of course, of both of those aspects is sometimes the regulars on campsites aren't always the people that you like. <laughs> I mean, nine times out of ten, we found nearly everybody we've come across to be really lovely and polite and like in the holiday spirit and they just, you know, want to have a good time and they're happy. But now and then, you know, you get people who just want to moan all the time and complain and who, you know, you can't ever please. So you've got to kind of take the rough with the smooth when it comes to managing people and, and working with people. Um, the great British public. Um, God love them. <laughs> um, and also the same for your employers and your colleagues as well, because if you're in a very small team with just the site owner or the family of the site or, um, you know, just you and a couple of other people, you're going to see those people all day, every day, um, or a lot of a lot of the time. And so obviously, and bearing in mind, which I'm going to come on to in a minute, you're going to also live on site probably. So there's not even really an escape from that. So I think the people thing can, can definitely be um a challenge sometimes you know we've we've heard of of people who really didn't get on well with either the people they're working with but then also if you have a positive experience it is like having an extended family on the site so yeah definitely definitely good final one then and my pro slash con number five to finish off um and this actually might be the most obvious one in in some senses but um and that is that your accommodation 
is often going to be included with your job as a campsite warden. So ours was, we had a pitch included um, where we could put our own caravan. Sometimes it's like that, the, the job will come with a pitch on site that you can kind of bring your own caravan or motorhome. Sometimes there's either a tourer or a static caravan or a little chalet or something that is designated for staff. Um, so yeah, usually I would say kind of 95% of the time you'll find that if you're a warden, an on-site warden, and you're expected to do kind of duties on site and stuff, that you are gonna be kind of living on site. And the obvious benefit to this is that you don't have a commute. <laughs> like you're right there and that is really handy. Um, also great if you've got a dog as well, because usually obviously you can be on site and, and generally you can come back and kind of walk the dog or see to your dog or whatever. It worked really well for us like that. Um, obviously if the site's dog friendly, <laughs> you need to check that before you apply. Um, and also, yeah, it, it saves you a lot of money. I mean, your your free pitch is usually paid for, obviously, in your, your time in some way or other, um, but it will include most likely your electric hookup, obviously water and stuff like that is all included on a campsite pitch. And so um, really all you're paying for is your, your food and, and your fuel and stuff like that, you know? So it is a great way of saving money. We found that even working at minimum wage, we were able to save way more living like that over the summer than we had been in our previous jobs when we were teachers earning like twice to three times the amount um so it is amazing what you can save and you know that's that's a huge plus for a lot of people it's a massive reason why people do go and do this kind of work um the flip side i think of living on site and it's maybe something that you you maybe wouldn't think about until you've done it is that you you're living on site <laughs> you know there's no escape from that there's no transition between what is work and what is home um and of course you're always available even if you're not working you know if you're in a team where you're rotated and you have a day off or or whatever um you're not working 24 7 but people staying on the site don't necessarily know that and obviously they're going to know where the warden caravan is or whatever um and they'll pop pop over, come round and knock on the door at all hours of the day and night. <laughs> um, sometimes just to be social, which is lovely of people, but also if, if you've just worked four days straight and you want some time to yourself, then you don't really want, you know, Mabel from Caravan Number 7 popping and knocking on the door to give you a bunch of daffodils. Nice as that is, you know? So it is nice to have that work-home balance. It's something I really hadn't considered until actually doing it. Um, and of course, it also works for your employer as well. I mean, most employers are very respectful of your time, but I'm sure there could be an instance where, you know, you were, you're sort of essentially always always there. And I guess if there's a, a problem or something, and you probably would want to help out if there was an emergency, but yeah, you're always there. You haven't really got a great excuse. You can't be like, oh no, I'm out <laughs> if you're sat there. Um, just something to bear in mind. It's not something to put you off at all because there are so, so many benefits to living where you work. And like I say, budget wise and, and convenience, it's brilliant. You really can't beat that. But just, yeah, just be aware that you are going to be pestered quite a bit by, uh, particularly by people staying because they don't know, they don't realise, you know, they don't assume that you're having a day off. <laughs> Why would you be having a day off? Come on. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, they're just on holiday and they want their issues or whatever sorted. And sometimes people just want to come and have a chat because they like you because you're nice. So anyway, uh, yeah, so those have been sort of five things I think to think about. So to recap, you're gonna work seasonally. Your job is very varied and different every day. You're gonna work outside a lot. You are gonna work with people a lot and your accommodation is going to be on site included with the job. So I hope that's given you a little bit of food for thought and that you've kind of found it interesting and, and heard heard a little bit more if you want to and ask any questions or anything please do pop them in the comments and i'll um i'll try and get back to you as best as i can and um yeah it's nice to have been able to pop in and say hello i think um we're doing pretty well on on up updating our our youtube and stuff we're really trying to get um our facebook page up and running again as well um you'll have seen that i've been doing some little illustrations and stuff that's actually why if you if you watch the last couple of videos you'll know that's why I've left the campsite this year, so I'm not going back to do a fifth season because I'm now running my own business, which is cool. I've just released a book, which is very exciting. This is um, nothing to do with caravans. It's all um, it's all kind of positive mental health and stuff like that. So it's a pit little picture book for adults. It's got all my little artwork and stuff in there. Um, so yeah, that's that's what I'm doing. And then also this, 
excuse me, this year, 2022, we are branching into doing some illustration work and stuff for the caravan community. So you'll probably have seen the little cartoons that we're putting up with our videos. So that's my illustration work. Um, and we're hoping for the beginning of like the proper 2022 caravan season. So March time that we're going to release um, a series of like funny, humorous caravan um, greeting cards and also like a travel log that you can keep in your caravan to fill in and just some bits and pieces like that. We're going to hopefully do mugs and stuff. And we're going to tour around a lot this year and go to um, fairs and events and stuff like that and, and kind of sell our caravan stuff and also my my um, my other artwork. So, yeah, it's an exciting year and we're really happy to actually hopefully be able to have some content that will be worth sharing with you as we travel around. Because to be honest, when you're just in one place, it's not that interesting um, or not that interesting to to kind of view I guess so yeah I hope I'm really appreciative and I know Jamie is too that you guys are still with us um and hello to everyone else who's joined us recently um we are going to be updating lots more like we said keep an eye out for the bits and pieces we've got we've actually set up a little um a URL I'll pop it in here <laughs> um that is going to be eventually that will be a little shop where you can buy greeting cards mugs t-shirts that kind of stuff um with the little illustrations on they're great for like father's day and birthdays and, and little things like that so um if you save that in your favorites then yep we'll be putting our stuff up there hopefully very soon for sale and also obviously do hop over and follow the facebook page because while we might only put one or two videos out a month on youtube we are going to get much better and um, once we pick the caravan up again at the end of this month um and into march we're gonna we've got some trips away planned and stuff so we're going to be obviously putting loads of content on on facebook so that's probably and instagram there are good places to follow us if you want the little in between updates Anyway, that is enough rambling from me. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, give it a little like, share it if you want to, and by all means comment, we'll always get back to you. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, whatever you're up to, and I'll see you in the next one.